What a bunch of absolute scumbags. Mm -hmm. So let's back up a little bit. So doesn't that kind of say, doesn't that kind of make it where all the, all the COVID protocols they made? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that kind of seem moot when you got gangs running the school? You have gangs running the school, but you're worried about COVID masks. Mm -hmm. You're worried about ventilation. Bro, you got gangs running the school. Yep. And you're worried about COVID. Yep. COVID. Yep. Like that, when you take a step back, that, doesn't that doesn't that just make the entire last two years seem silly? <laughs> silly. <laughs> and welcome back to Real News Michiana's weekly, sometimes Real News Roundup. I'm your host Ben, and this guy to the right of your screen, he is the truth wielding. Majestically bearded assassin. This guy exposes the corruption in the South Bend, Michiana area, one scumbag at a time. He is none other than the editor and the founder of Real News Michiana, Clifton French. What is up, Holy Skillet? How are we doing on this Saturday? Hey, doing well, Ben. And I want to apologize, everybody, for the last couple of weeks. I was on vacation and then I had the flu. So uh, so that's why we, we missed a couple of weeks here. Uh, but we're back. Once again, go to realnewsmachina.com. Subscribe. It's $9 a month. That's how you support Real News. Um, and that's how I'm able to, to continue to do what I'm doing. So please, 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 um, you know, open your wallets for 30 cents a day and, and, and help us continue to expose everything that the legacy media will not. And smash that like button. Share this video. Comment below. And let me know if you disagree, because I love arguing with trolls. <laughs> Get into things! <laughs> Middle school vice principal posts pics of kids throwing up gang signs. Yeah, Ben, how about that? No surprise. Oh, here. man. No so, surprise here. So this I'm like, now, the Clifton, before we get into this, do you think there's any chance that she knew they were gang signs? Or she that out of touch? Or like, well, 100% she knew that they were gang signs. So um, this this vice principal, her name is Carlisha Gadsden. She's the she's a vice principal of Navarre Middle School. Um, posted a ton of pictures on her um, on her Facebook page of the uh, from from a week ago today of the eighth grade graduation from Navarre Middle School. Kids just throwing up signs, right? Now, by the way, I've covered gangs, um, a bit of a, a, a gang expert, right? I've covered gangs for for a dozen years. Um, that part of, of our community where Navarre is, is very well known. It's, it's Latin King territory. It's vice Lord territory. Um, and so those gang signs are just in, any educator in that area is going to know exactly what those are. Right. Um, so there's the crown sign that one girl is throwing. Um, that's a, that's a well-known Latin King sign. Uh, it's a five point crown, the five points of the, of the nation, um, because it's one of those nation gangs, vice lords, once again, um, a nation, uh, but the, so vice lords, they, uh, vice lords and the Kings both use what's called a crip killer sign. Um, and so another child is using the crip killer sign, um, in, in these, in these videos and they're not hiding it right in these pictures and videos. They're, 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 they are repping their gangs. Um, Crip, Crip Killer sign used by used by Latin Kings, used by Vice Lords. Um, very, very common um, gang sign. They, you know, and it, it, it essentially means, hey, listen, I'm I, I, I kill people from other gangs, um, you know, in light of of what's in national news right now with with school shooting. I think you would be um, pretty hyper vigilant of, uh, of of that kind of thing going on within your schools. Nice. Um, Way to protect your schools, by the way. Uh, Why do you keep kids safe? That well, is so, awesome. I, I mean, supporting gang activity, I can't mm -hmm. think of a, a clearer well, way. Keep your kids safe. This is this is nothing new in, in, um, in South Bend, right? So uh, Jackson Middle School, I, I, I did an investigation last year on, on Jackson Middle School where a, um, a high-ranking member of the Latin Kings, a guy by the name of Eli Cantu, was hired by the principal who knows all about this individual, right? The school district knew all about this individual. He is what's called a nation man with the Latin Kings, okay? He takes all of his orders directly from uh, from, from the, the head leadership in Chicago, Lord Gino and Baby King, 
Um, his whole job is to infiltrate, uh, it, to be like the PR arm of, of the Latin Kings, right? And to infiltrate different community organizations, politics, police department um, sometimes, right? Some of these guys infiltrate police departments all across the country. Um, he infiltrated a middle school as the in-school suspension teacher, having all of the naughty kids come straight to him for recruitment, okay? Um, this is this is very, very common. You have, you have all of these public, you have a lot of public officials who are actually involved in these gangs, um, who support these gangs or are members themselves. Um, South Bend Schools seems to be a cesspool of this. Uh, I, almost every single shooting within our community involves um, one of the nation gangs, typically the Latin Kings. So basically what you're saying is the gangs are running our schools in South Bend. The gangs Bend. are running our schools. The gangs are running our schools in South Bend. Now on top of that, so the Navarre Middle School is a part of the, the South Bend Empowerment Zone, that little group of failing schools that was pulled away from South Bend schools um, and to, to kind of run themselves. There are five or six schools involved in that, a bunch of elementary schools all feeding into Navarre. And uh, the the this, the CEO, who's like the superintendent of the uh, of the empowerment zone, her name is Cheryl Camacho, actually kicked a police officer out of the school, out of a school, who was there doing a walkthrough the day after a school shooting threat. Um, they hate police. Uh, she is she is vocal about hating police. Other administrators there, um, Regina Williams Preston. Uh, also hates police. She hold is. Up, hold up, hold up, Cliff, and I'm going to play that video real quick of the okay. getting kicked out of the school. So here we go. Here's the video. We have a conversation, me and your chief, just to understand what exactly. Ma'am, I don't make policy. I don't make policy. Right, that's why I said I need to have a conversation with but your if, chief. But if you're you're not going to hurt my feelings, if you don't want me walking through your school, I won't come through your school. Yeah, I think for now, let's hold until I have the conversation with the chief. Okay. Yeah. And your name is? Cheryl Camacho. Dr. Cheryl, Camacho. Doctor, okay. Yeah. Nice I'm, to meet I'm you. Nice to meet you. Thank you okay, so much. Okay. So just, just so we're clear, uh -huh. you don't want me through your school. Not until I have a conversation with the chief about what the focus will be. Okay. 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 But thank you. We're the good guys. I, I, I know you are and I appreciate okay. that. Okay. All right. Thank well, listen, so have a good morning. Okay. You too. Take care. All right. And I'll pass it along that we're not to come in here. Okay. Great. Thank you. There's some Dr. Camacho or whatever who's going to call the chief's office and that they do not want police inside their building. They do not feel safe and they need more dialogue until the police are welcome inside the school. Okay, I'm Claire. I'll uh, pass that on to the uh, captain. Please feel free to uh, watch my body camera. It was on the whole time. Uh, you'll be disgusted. So another person who's involved, uh, Regina, I think it's Preston Williams or Williams Preston. Um, she is she's a, a part of BLM. She has been the major, the one of the the largest voices and the biggest push to remove all uh, police officers from from South Bend schools, um, the, claiming that they're committing violence against against students. I, th these people are insane. They're crazy. They don't care about your children um, at all. They don't care about your children at all. Uh, they care more about these these violent gangs. And by the way, the Latin Kings um, make most of their money off of uh, drug trafficking and human trafficking. Um, so, I mean, legitimate uh, trafficking of, of young girls and women um, in, in a prostitution ring, which actually is a, a major problem here in here in um, the South Bend, Mishawaka area. What a bunch of absolute scumbags. Mm -hmm. So let's back up a little bit. So doesn't that kind of same? Doesn't that kind of make it where all the all the COVID protocols they made? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that kind of seem moot when you got gangs running Run the school? It. You have gangs running the school, but you're worried about COVID masks. Mm -hmm. You're worried about ventilation, bro. You got gangs running the school. Yeah, and you're worried about COVID. Yep. COVID. Yeah. Like that. When you take a step back. That, doesn't that doesn't that just make the entire last two years seem silly? <laughs> silly. Yeah. Don't worry about first world problems. Yeah. Don't worry about COVID. You got gangs, gangs huh? running your school. We even have uh, Latin King sections in parts of Europe. Man, like it is one of the largest and most organized. Um, gangs in the entire world. 
Uh, it is an international organization. There are, um, like in, in prisons, for instance, uh, there was one instance where a gentleman was, um, he, he made a bad, um, a bad move against the kings, was chopped up and fed to the population. He was chopped up and fed to the population within, um, the, you know, within the other members who cooked him up um, into chili uh, in the, you know, in the, in the kitchen at the prison. So, you know, that is the type of, of people who are running South Bend schools. Moving on to the next story. A youth hockey coach was just arrested for attempting to pick up a child prostitute. Yeah. Apologize that my boy is obviously back here jumping on the trampoline. Um, and there's no stopping it. So um, it's okay. Let's just let's just let it go. So so we have this this youth hockey coach, um, Christian Joubert, uh, big time. If, if you're involved in hockey in this area, you know who he is. Um, he is involved in the Ice Box. He was a director of hockey operations at um, at at the Ice Box. Also, um, the head coach of a girls. Uh, hockey organization um, or another hockey hockey league uh, involving um, some of them involving young girls, right? The age of the girl who he was uh, the alleged girl or the assumed girl that he was trying to uh, pay eighty dollars and some soda pop to for sexual acts. Um, Mr. Joubert, he went to a well known um, a well known website for prostitution. It's called SkipTheGames.com. It's I don't know if um, if anybody was familiar with what um, what Trump did when he eliminated some of this online um, prostitution, um, there was a site called Backpage. This is essentially Backpage, um, and it's found a way around all of these uh, regulations and laws now. Wow. Okay, so then you got guys like this that exist, like just scumbags. Well, and this guy also, he admitted to using this. This website's well known. I am okay. Going back to the Latin Kings, right? It's well like the Latin Kings use this website, right? When moving young kids, when moving prostitutes and stuff like that. This guy has uh, admitted to detectives that he's used this website. Uh, he uses it two or three times a month, right? Um, he has a family of his own. He's going around and uh, and and picking up these 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 prostitutes, and who knows how many actual underage prostitutes um, there are who he has slept with in the past um so he's got a family of his own you said mm -hmm. yeah he's got a wife and kids uh oh, he and his wife sad. Actually, so sad for the family so yeah, sad he and, he and his family. wife run um a hockey organization uh they they started a hockey organization and they run it it's based out of uh niles michigan so he and his wife run what is called the north american alliance hockey club um which also includes a youth girls team he is the coach um, I believe that his brother also coaches, you know, it, really sad that this is going on for, for all of his family. Um, but luckily this was a sting that was set up. This was a sting operation. The, the, the police, you know, there, there was no, there was no child victim here, um, because the police were pretending to be a, uh, a 15 year old girl. Um, but he sent, you know, he, he knew that this was a child. He sent this child, uh, pictures of his of his genitalia. He sent pictures of um, you know per, use hand gestures pretending to uh, to to perform oral sex on a female. Um, just a scumbag. Should not be around children. And uh, let's let's hope that his his reach um, his victim reach right uh, was extremely limited. So he gets properly taken care of in jail. I'm sure he will. On to the next story. Once again, Niles schools. Now they're training teachers on how to talk to white kids about race, LGBTQIA terminology, privilege, and student sexuality. OMG. What is going on again with Niles? Ben. These are some sick, disgusting individuals. <laughs> so Niles schools, insane. Insane. I mean, and it's a, it's a, it's a, the, your, your standard typical players, right? Um, the same people who are involved in this, Jaron Blood, a uh, principal, um, a Shabazz, uh, who is a principal, and then the direct, Ann Bingham, who's a director of, uh, of, of curriculum for the entire school district. They held this um, a professional development on MLK Day earlier this year. And this professional development included, I mean, it was just woke propaganda. Right. Um, yeah. On top of that, one of the other. So they they had all of these different 
different things that you could sit in on, right? One of them actually involved a panel of students, panel of students who discussed sex with the teachers and staff. I read that in your story. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to learn from the students. They wanted to learn from the students. They learned from the students the crap that they're teaching the students. And I, honestly, honestly, uh, Ben, this is abuse. This is yeah. um, what what they did was beyond. I mean, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. If any teacher talked to my child about something like that, it would it would not be a good day for them. This is it was the gender identity and sexuality student panel. Asking the culture club questions about their lived experiences, we will learn about diversity, equity, inclusion, privilege, and marginalization straight from the mouths of our students as it relates to gender identity and sexuality. They had their kid. They had kids. They had kids talking to the teachers about sex. They should be in jail. These everybody who was involved in this should be in jail along with uh, that hockey teacher, that hockey coach who we were just talking about. Every you're single damn, one. You're damn right. It's another funny. another thing that they talked about was uh, once again talking with white kids about race, safe space, radio learning, how and when to talk about race and racism in a way that can make a difference with young people. Um, another thing, LGBTQ plus terminology, a primer. So how how to I just just crazy a race implicit association test implicit association test for uh, free for all um what else is in here intersectionality and circle of privilege all of these things to teach for for professional development for teachers this is what they in trying to say that that gender that that radical gender theory and radical critical race theory isn't being taught in these schools it's all right here it's See, this, this is what PHM doesn't understand. Yeah. When, um, they start using words like equity, you know, diversity and inclusion and all this stuff. This is what it leads to. This is all this, this is, is the what end it is. point. This it is critical theory. Yes. Under the next story, St. Joe County hires a disgraced doctor for birth equity seminar study. I guess she had her medical license suspended for allegedly killing a baby and the mother. Mm. What is going on with St. Joe County Health? Yeah, oh, so, my goodness, man. So uh, I, I sat in on a on a meeting with the St. Joseph County uh, Board of Health um, last week, and just gross, Ben. Just gross. So they they talked about this whole push for birth equity, um, and and talked about this this doctor and these seminars and all of this stuff, and they just applauded each other. But nobody's done any research on this woman, right? Um, so essentially, uh, what this woman is doing is is pushing CRT onto onto you know having children, right? She blames any any difference in um, the outcome of um, fetal, infant, or maternal mortality, right? All of that is based on systemic racism. So, and it's based on how doctors talk to patients and how, and how nurses deal with patients. Um, it's their fault because they're racist and that's what's causing all of these issues, right? So the doctor, her name is Joya Creer Perry. Okay. She's out of New Orleans. Um, she was paid $20,000 just for, just for, um, a, uh, a seminar that she held on April 13th and 14th, right? Um, for one day, seminar, one seminar. For, for one seminar, uh, the county paid $20,000 for this the seminar. The county, so the taxpayers the paid $20,000 yes. because of equity. Because of equity, birth equity, equity crazy, like nonsense, Okay in which all she did was blame white supremacy as the reason for any health disparities between races, right? Now, this woman has been a failing doctor for her entire career, all right? That's all she's done. Now, the county is paying her even more for a survey of the entire county to figure out where these racial disparities and, and what exactly is happening, right? Like, how racist are our doctors, okay? Um... It took me 30 seconds to find these red flags, Ben, on how bad of a, of, of a, of a person 
and how bad of a doctor this woman is, okay? All the way back to 2005, she had her hospital privileges uh, partially revoked by Baptist Memorial Medical Center in New Orleans for not following hospital rules and putting patient safety at risk. Um, she was told that she could get her privileges restored after she went through another year of training with an approved residency program. So she lied, claimed she was taking a leave of absence for that training, but instead she went and got staff privileges at another hospital, East Jefferson General Hospital, also in Louisiana, and never disclosed that suspension. That was illegal. She then failed to disclose um, her suspension to the State Board of Medical Examiners, also illegal, and practiced for three years before the death of a child in her hands that led to a medical malpractice lawsuit. Now, in that case, in 2007, she's accused of puncturing the amniotic sac of a 20-week pregnant woman that led to the death of that child, right? Um, apparently, she was looking for an IUD that did not exist and did not use an ultrasound or anything else to uh, to, to guide her in this process. There's an IUD. Um, Let's explain IUD what that is. is a birth control device. Um, okay. Sometimes they fail. Most of the time, they don't. Uh, this woman, a lot of times, they fall out, though. So typically, if you get pregnant and you have an IUD, it's fallen out. Well, she didn't even check to see if it was still there. Didn't check. Instead, just took a bunch of tools up um, and then ruptured the amniotic sac and a stillborn child was born a few weeks later. Um, and then uh, she's accused of a, of, of a, of a botched cesarean uh, and that, that ended in the death of a woman. Um, in, in 2008, she had her medical privileges revoked after, at the new hospital. Um, <laughs> just insane. Um, then, um, the state of Louisiana suspended her medical license for, for six months, um, because of her, you know, not telling them about any of these issues that she's had that she's supposed to disclose. Um, she was ordered to do a bunch of other, a bunch of things to have her license, uh, restored. She ignored that, continued to practice medicine illegally at this point. Um, in 2009, uh, the state of Louisiana suspended her license even further. She didn't get her license in, back until 2014. In 2010, she was selected by the New, or New Orleans mayor to be the city's acting health director, but that was short-lived because um, the, the media um, picked up on this and saw that her license was suspended and reported all of these things, and she was asked to step down. Um, None of this. So this woman has essentially failed as a doctor. Okay. Now she screams racist. Failed as a human being. Go ahead. Yes. 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 She has failed as a human, failed as a doctor. She is, she is the Vernado Malone of freaking, uh, of, of, <laughs> of, of, of doctors. Right. <clears throat> and she is, <laughs> she is simply, you're killing me, man. She's simply pushing all of this fraudulent crap. And now she just yells racism at the top of her lungs. And is a hero. She is. This all stems with the problem we have with this Marxist philosophy, this critical mm -hmm. race theory. It's not just a theory, you see. Mm -hmm. It's called critical race theory, but what is it really? It's a call to action. Yep. That's what we have a problem with because yep. that call to action is what caused the taxpayers to mm -hmm. pay this criminal twenty thousand dollars for yep. one seminar. She should be in jail. Oh, also I, in jail. So, so after after um, you know a standing ovation and applause at the last board of health meeting, talking about this woman and talking about this stuff, um, I had public. I, I decided to speak during public comment um, and brought up it just. It, I, I I talked for fifteen Yay! seconds, brought up um, these issues, and the board president Heidi Bidinger Burnett turned off the Zoom meeting. I think that wraps up our, our real news yeah. roundup for this week. Yeah. That's it. So, and I apologize for the young one. Um, we're about to, to head off to the zoo. So he's excited. Sounds awesome. But I'm about to take my kids to watch the new Top Gun. There you go, brother. We can't wait. We watched the original last night just to yeah. get them all caught up. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome. we can't wait to see the sequel. That's coming up here in about an hour or so. Um, again, please like and subscribe to this channel. Go to realnewsmichiana.com and become a subscriber. That's how we keep all these stories of all these <laughs> of schools that promote gangs and equity doctors being hired, and, um, you know, and schools talking to white kids about race and sexuality. That's how you know this stuff because nobody else is reporting it. No. That bearded assassin guy right there, he's doing all the legwork. He's doing all the reporting, and we got to show him some support.
As always, stay informed, folks. Thank <laughs> you.